As the number of new COVID-19 infections rises daily in the country, Nigerians are being encouraged to go out and get vaccinated, especially as more dangerous variants of the disease emerge. Joining me via Zoom to discuss COVID-19 variants and vaccines is Dr. Jafet Olubogi, Chairman Committee on Infectious Diseases, Nigerian Medical Association, and the Lagos State Medical Officer of Health for Apapa Igomu Local Council Development Area. It's good to have you join me uh, this morning, Dr. Olubogi. Thank you for having me on the show this morning. Great. Now, uh, when it comes to the issue of uh, uh, COVID-19 and the third wave, we see the numbers rising every day and it has maintained the setting uh, tempo. Uh, but at this moment, a lot of people have talked about the issue of awareness creation on one hand and the need to enforce uh, uh, the, the, the obedience to protocols on the other hand. What should we really be doing now to make a difference? Yes, um, we should be enforcing uh, awareness uh, creation. Uh, awareness creation uh, cannot be underemphasized, uh, cannot be overemphasized. At the same time, uh, we need to reinforce the knowledge that people have on COVID-19, on COVID-19 protocols, uh, on COVID-19 vaccinations, on COVID-19 vaccines, on COVID-19 testing and then even treatment. So we need to continue creating the awareness uh, from time to time, we need to continue to reinforce the knowledge of people uh, on COVID-19. Uh, on the other hand, uh, well, uh, uh, governments uh, all over the world are beginning to think uh, they should make uh, some, uh, give some sanctions uh, to people who have refused to take the vaccines uh, because of the increment in the number of uh, uh, cases all over the world, uh, despite the fact that there are vaccines which are bound almost everywhere now. Uh, it has also been muted in Nigeria as well. Uh, but uh, my own personal opinion is that we should caution ourselves. Uh, we should not uh, rush to make uh, it mandatory for people. Uh, on the grounds that uh, when you force people to do something, uh, they tend to do the right opposite uh, of what you want them to uh, want to want to force them to do. So uh, what government should be doing is to continue to create the awareness uh, a lot more people will turn out uh, to go and get jobs uh, that way. Uh, government should also uh, lead by example and practice what they preach. Uh, by now, we expect uh, almost all the government uh, functionaries and officials to have taken the jobs, uh, their family members as well. Uh, so government should preach, uh, they should practice what they preach. And apart from that, they should also uh, make accessible uh, these vaccines uh, in all nooks and crannies of the federation they should procure more of the vaccines for people uh, because the, the doses the number of doses we have in the country now i uh, may not go anywhere uh, even if, when we exhaust the vaccines we have now uh, we probably would uh, not have vaccinated up to four to five percent of our population so government should uh, get more vaccines uh, and i'm sure the more the vaccines we have the more awareness creation we make uh, the more noise we make about it uh, the more people they are likely to win over uh, to go and get the jobs. All right. Now, we, we talk about the first wave, second wave, and now we are in the third wave or the third phase or call the third wave as the case may be. Now, talk to us basically or enlighten us. When we, have, we had the first wave and then things went down, we had the second wave, things went down, we now have the third wave. What really gives rise to this up and down that we call waves of uh, COVID-19 infections, really? Thank you very much. That's a very good question. Uh, when we had the first wave of the COVID-19 uh, virus, uh, there were some measures that were put in place by the government, uh, by WHO, by uh, MPACD, NCDC, governments all over the world, partners all over the world, public health uh, practitioners, medical experts, all healthcare workers all over the world. Uh, so when people uh, began to obey uh, these uh, from, uh, uh, public health and social uh, measures, uh, you will see a, a, a downward trend uh, in the transmissibility of the virus. And that was when uh, we had uh, a play to 
in the number of cases. It was when we had a play to the number of cases that we thought uh, the virus had gone. Uh, but then again, uh, uh, other parts of the world who, uh, where you had not had a number of cases spiraling, I began to see an upward trend uh, in the transmissibility of the virus. And then because human beings are nomadic in nature, uh, you move from one place to another, you pick up uh, the virus from one place and then transfer it to somewhere else. So countries where you had not begun to see uh, increment in number of cases, you would begin to see increment in number of cases there. Then uh, we now started having uh, mutations of the virus. And then uh, when you have mutations uh, in the virus, different mutations we happen in different countries and different communities at different points in time. When this happens, uh, people may be, some people may be at the level of community transmission, while some people may be at the level of cluster uh, transmission of the virus. And then because we move around a lot, because people move around, people have to travel, people have to you know, uh, interact. And then some part of the world, some part of the community, people let down their guards and then you have a resurgence uh, in the number of cases uh, they have in that particular area uh, at that particular point in time, which will now increase the incidence uh, of the uh, virus, of the number of cases uh, in, the, in that particular region. This is what causes uh, the first wave, the second wave, or the third wave, as the case may be. Uh, you may even be talking of a fourth wave uh, in some countries as you speak. And you may be talking about other variants uh, of the virus uh, in some countries, as we speak. Uh, we are all aware that uh, the WHO has also discovered the Mu variant uh, in Colombia. And uh, it's not only restricted to the Mu variant. Uh, we have several other variants uh, because the variants we had before were classified, are now classified as the variant of consent while the Mu variant and the slides like the Aota, the Kappa, the Lambda, the Mu variant, which are now classified under the variant of interest. And then that means that these new variants that we're talking about are capable of escaping uh, immune, uh, the immunity uh, that individuals have built over the month or over the years against COVID-19, especially when it comes to uh, taking the vaccine uh, for COVID-19. So uh, we, we are at war with COVID-19 and then the individuals should begin to take responsibility and then the government should begin to take responsibility and then uh, plunge headlong against this uh, virus. All right. Uh, it, it, talk, talking about the Mu variant that WHO has announced, uh, we understand is not in Africa yet, as at, uh, as at yesterday. But the point there is, how concerned should we be? Because the point, we've been talking about the issue of taking, like you said, taking responsibility, the people taking responsibility, the government taking responsibility. Now, we recall that uh, few, about a week ago, uh, the governor of Edo State had talked about the issue of uh, compulsory uh, 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 vaccination, where there's going to be the state government was making a move to ensure that it becomes compulsory for people to take vaccine in the state, although that was uh, resisted by uh, the demonstrations that we saw. When it comes to taking that responsibility, how much more should we do? Because it seems this persuasion uh, doesn't seem to be working. Uh, the Mu variant uh, is not known to uh, be so virulent uh, yet. Uh, research is still going on uh, on the Mu variant uh, and uh, on the transmissibility and uh, the deadliness of the Mu variant. Uh, but then again, uh, when a virus, uh, a, an mRNA virus uh, mutates like that, uh, they tend to uh, escape uh, the immunity that has been built uh, against them. And that is what we should be wary of. Uh, those who have not had the vaccines should begin to think of uh, finding a way to get the vaccines. As uh, per the uh, mandatory uh, uh, status of, the, uh, of, the, of taking the vaccines, uh, yes, uh, some countries all over the world are trying to mandate uh, their citizens to take the vaccines. And uh, at those states in Nigeria, I uh, tried that as well, although that uh, was pushed by uh, the protest, like rightly mentioned, and even the court injunction as well. Uh, well, uh, if you want to play the devil's advocate, uh, government can tell you that uh, 
we were bashed, we were pushed to procure vaccines, to get vaccines, acquire vaccines for the general public. Now we have acquired the vaccines for the general public. Go and take your vaccines, uh, whether you like it or not. And then uh, because of that, they know they're going to cost the cost of, uh, you know, having to treat people or having to maintain the isolation centers, which makes sense. So if you want to advocate for government, uh, you will understand uh, the angle that the government is coming from. Uh, but then again, we are in Nigeria as a free society. Uh, individuals have the right to reject food. They have the right to reject treatment. They have the right to reject uh, vaccines. They have the right to reject even medicines. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why uh, in the hospitals, when somebody wants to go against medical advice, we make them sign that you are discharging yourself against medical advice. Uh, and you cannot force them to stay. You cannot force them to take uh, the treatment you are giving them because they have that fundamental human right. But what we can do, like I said earlier on, is to continue to persuade people uh, to continue to create awareness, to reinforce awareness. Uh, we continue to uh, communicate the risk of not taking the vaccines, uh, communicate uh, the benefits of taking the vaccines, just like we are doing right now. Uh, because we know that very soon, uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, vaccine card uh, uh, will become uh, a part and parcel of our uh, travel uh, documents. Uh, it may uh, be required for us to enroll in schools, for us to uh, enroll in a company or in a government facility. So uh, these are the benefits that we ought to be preaching to people. We may even have uh, churches or mosques which may require uh, that their congregants or their parishioners uh, present uh, a COVID-19 vaccination card or even event centers uh, requiring that you present a COVID-19 vaccination card alongside your uh, IV, uh, of course. So. Keeping all this in mind, uh, we need uh, to do the needful and proceed uh, to the nearest vaccination centers uh, uh, around us uh, to get the jabs uh, so that we can make hay while the sun shines. All right. Talk to us about uh, the impact of uh, conspiracy theories and some of the fake news that we see and receive, uh, especially on social media. Uh, in the last couple of days or about a week, uh, there has been lots of videos out there circulating, uh, purported to be some very prominent health icons and international uh, uh, icons, talking to people about the issue of uh, not taking the vaccine and all of that. What impacts do these have on the way, on the hesitancy that we are seeing from people? Unfortunately, uh, bad news, uh, they say travel very fast, uh, and you journalists uh, know that uh, uh, bad news, bad uh, information, uh, negative news, uh, they spread faster than uh, positive news. So uh, these uh, videos, this information, uh, like you rightly mentioned, have had negative effects, in fact, severe effects on uh, the awareness creation and the positive reinforcement that people like us have been doing uh, over the month and over the year. Uh, but then again, uh, we would not relent. Uh, most of them are just propaganda. Uh, some mischievous people are trying to discredit uh, the good work uh, people like you, uh, people like us are putting in to ensure that uh, we put out the right information out there uh, for people to hear. Uh, we have heard people circulating videos of uh, Bill Gates, uh, videos of uh, the CEO of Pfizer, and misinterpreting uh, whatever they have to say. Uh, it is all propaganda. Uh, the vaccines up until now, up until this morning, are safe, as declared by WHO, and even in our own country by the Standard Organization of Nigeria and the NAVDAC itself. So the vaccines are safe, and they are effective. I can tell you categorically that uh, in the past few weeks, I've had colleagues whom we work together, whom we uh, go to field together, uh, coming down with uh, the virus. But because of the fact that they've been vaccinated, they've been fully vaccinated, uh, they have a mild, what we call a mild illness uh, from the virus. Imagine if they had not been uh, fully vaccinated. Uh, it, it may be a different kettle of fish entirely. So uh, government should try as much as possible uh, to use a carrot uh, on stick approach. Uh, and the, if they don't have the carrot at all, uh, they should not use the stick at all uh, in the first place to ensure that people uh, get vaccinated. And uh, I want to plead with people to stop spreading 
fake news to start spreading uh, rumors. Uh, these rumors, these fake news, uh, they, 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 they tend to, uh, uh, people who were skeptical in the first place, uh, they tend to believe these fake rumors and fake news uh, more than even the, uh, the, the original news and the original information that we are putting out there. So uh, they should please stop it. Uh, if they don't understand, uh, we, we have the short code of the NCDC 6232. They can send a short code and uh, they can get information from that. Uh, they can call the 08,000 uh, Corona. Uh, they can get information from that. They can go to the uh, NCDC website. They can also get very table information from that. And they can call the Nigerian Medical Association, the WHO officials, the uh, medical officers of health, uh, in Lagos or in Nigeria as well, and they can call government officials uh, who have been toiling day and night uh, to make sure that people get vaccinated, uh, to make sure that people get tested, to make sure that people get uh, treatment uh, in the isolation centers or even in the community uh, over the years. So uh, people should stop discrediting the good work uh, that this lot of people are putting into the work. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Jafet Olubogi, for that insightful uh, discussion this morning. And also the, the, the short codes of the NCDC you gave out really important, 6232. Uh, that's the, the short code you can call the NCDC to report anything and uh, give any information as well or anything you want to find out regarding the, the vaccines and uh, any issue around COVID-19 and even other infectious diseases as well. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us on TVC. It's always my pleasure. Great.